Rugby Nation. Hello, Lee Kemp here for another week on the podcast. As always, with Jose Neuer and the Meg Griffin of the podcast, Ryan Boniface. How are we, guys? Good, good to be back. Thanks for bringing me back nicely. That's right. If you were on TikTok, you could have joined in with our pre-show banter as well. Just follow Joe, J Neuer underscore Inspiration Nation on TikTok, helping that journey to 5,000 and get involved with the podcast as many people are doing right now and do not miss out right now joe is incredibly popular on youtube with his shorts there are loads <laughs> of views going on there loads of support this is jose noy inspiration nation on youtube and get a look this is the short videos not joe in his shorts that's, <laughs> that's what i was thinking they said it sounds like i was uh, in my shorts there's some sort of weird thing going yeah, on there if you if you look jose noya on only fans you will find joe in his shorts yes. no you will uh, not you find YouTube, me on only fans you'll see the jose noya shorts which is uh, a totally what i'm most thing. concerned about is the fact that a man in his 50s and lee Know what OnlyFans is? <laughs> oh, we yeah, do, we do, we do. And, and, and just, just to be clear, that's the only platform I am not on <laughs> yet. More news to the power of yet. The, the power. Show. Stay with us. The power of yet. <laughs> not on it yet. We've done. We've done episodes. We've done episodes on this. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. Do you know what? Do you know what? I wonder how it'd go down. Actually, I wonder if we did the nation on on OnlyFans. I wonder how that would go down. It'd be interesting, wouldn't it? It'd be funny. So... OnlyFans go down. Moving on. Thank you for supporting oh. us. Follow us on Twitter, where we actually are at Listen to uh... Listen T O I N. And again, Jose Noy, Inspiration Nation. Stick it into your Google machine. Joe is everywhere. And I say YouTube and tiktok right now he is putting out some fantastic content some of it features me that is the best stuff go and give it a watch ryan yeah. generally gets us banned from tiktok so i actually know, do that's... bad isn't it <laughs> okay we keep getting banned we keep getting banned we keep getting banned um i don't know why and i have said i have said to the tiktok thank you for liking by the way who's liking this who's that who's liking this thank you for liking whoever this hi homie how you doing I've got homie just I think homie might have just like that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes, Aaron just appreciate joined Appreciate it, everyone. Right. We better talk about some inspirational stuff, hadn't we? Yep. Go for it, man. So Joe's kept us going for the last three weeks with um brilliant reading from the boy, the thing, <laughs> and a horse and a cow. <laughs> there was a fox. There was a fox. And Ryan even remembers. Ryan even I, don't know. I, I was only, heart, I I was only here for it. one. I just really struggle with the title, but I, I was only here. For, I was only here for one of the episodes. As <laughs> well. He's only here for one episode, and Ryan already remembers the title. <laughs> I love it. It's brilliant. Yeah, Go it's it. Sorry. Uh, the boy, the mole, the fox, and the horse. You got it, man. You got it. Boom. See, he, he googled all over it. it. He googled it. No, 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 no. I did not. I did last week. I won't lie, but there, I, I was <laughs> trying to remember through the story. Um, right, so I am the man with the plan this week. So this is, you know, sometimes I like to do one where it's a bit conceptual or something and it might work and it might not. So I apologise in advance if this does not work, but I want to go double down on the whole things that inspire us conversation. So either this will give some inspiration to you all or you will think, Lee, what goes in your head? We love you. Get on with it. But it's not for me. So let's I'm, sure, see. I'm not sure we'd say that. The penultimate All part right, of that, Lee, whatever we tolerate you, whatever Better. goes on your head, go Better. and do it in the corner and leave us alone. Better, cool. Hashtag Jose Noya OnlyFans. <laughs> right, so that's going to be a thing now. You realize it is, Peti- you know, I'm going to for a petition by the end of this week. I tell you what, tweet, Lee, Lee's going to be tweeting about that later. He's actually going to tweet that. I just got a feeling of it. I don't petition, know. Petition for Joe in shorts on the internet. Oh my god, please don't this do that. Is, this is Don't Thursday <laughs> evenings we record this. This will drop on Friday. If you look back yesterday on the nation at listen to N, listen to N, there may well be a hashtag. We shall see. If we get a ten thousand followers in this episode, I will go into some shorts. That's what I'm going to say. There you go. I'm glad I've not eaten yet. Right. So, <laughs> so my my ex, my kids live up in Scotland. I think about ages ago. I live fairly close to the south coast. There's about four hundred miles in between us. So I go up and see him every few months. So I, we would, and me and my father, we were driving back. We've driven it quite a lot now, and it's, it's a good drive. Um, sometimes it takes six hours. Sometimes it takes 12. Generally, it's not that bad, I have to say. But 
I started thinking this is over a couple of trips. So not this trip, but a few trips ago, we were driving back and we were driving somewhere through the Yorkshire Dales on windy roads that kind of on the side of hills a little bit. And there was this really picturesque little town and it wasn't, but the only thing I could describe it is it almost looked like Ballamory in the hills where it was. And it looked really, really nice. And I thought, I wonder where that place, where that is. So I got Google Maps up, found where we were, saw the place, opened up its little Wikipedia page, read about it because I'm a nerd and I like doing stuff like that. And then I don't know what got me onto it. And I was like, I wonder what bit of road we're on now, actually. And then opened up a thing about the road, gets more nerdy. Um, and you know how you do, you start opening and opening and opening. And I got to this article about the stretch of road we were on. And there was this really, really nice piece that someone has written about they they lived in the village. So they lived in the village that we just drove past. And back in whenever it was, probably 50s or 60s, something like that, they'd started building this road. And he just finished school. What do I do for a job? They're building the road over there. And got. I'm, I'm paraphrasing this. So I'm going to try and find the article and I'll do it more justice and I'll probably post a link to it. But this is roughly what's there. So if someone's listening and thinks, oh, that was me and you're doing it terribly, feel free to tell me. So, but my potted summary was, you know, he got a job then with building the road and it was driving a, some sort of thing. So a, a digger or an earth mover or, or something in that range. And he, because it was up the road and they did that, that whole stretch of road and, you know, he, for five years or so he worked doing that, liked what he was doing, decided he wanted to get into that and went down a route of whatever these diggers or things were. But with this company built another bit of road, I think moves the family where they were building something else. And he kind of went through his whole life that he'd had that, you know, his life wasn't his job, but he really liked what he did. And that provided for his family and influenced what they did, you know, where they lived, how they grew up, what sort of things they saw and didn't see in life. Um, all because he happened to live in a house where they happened to be building a road across the way. And if that never happened... He might have got a completely different job doing a completely different thing. They'd have ended up living somewhere else. They'd have ended up meeting different people. And I just, it was a real, real fascinating read where this bit of road that I'm driving along and I'm just taking for granted, this got like his heart was in this road completely. It, you know, he understood it. He knew the area. He knew why they built it in the way they did. That moved on to other things. And this was really significant in his life. And I'm just driving along, not even thinking about it. And in fact, the age I am, you know, when I, I was born in the 80s, you only start to realise the world around you in the 90s, by which time, you know, our whole infrastructure is up and running like it is now. And I only started driving year 2000, I'm going to say. So I'm completely taking these things for granted that didn't even exist 50 years ago. I don't know, something really struck me about reading this, about the guy and what it meant, what it meant to him and his family and everything else, just just from it having been there. Um, and then, so I read that and I really liked that and I thought I'll store that away for later. And then we were driving back on a, again, this was either just before Christmas or just after Christmas. It was either December or sometime January, whenever it was, we were driving back and we went past that place again and it popped back in my head and I was like, oh, I really love that. And that's where I was like, I want to talk about this. And it really got me, thinking about all of us and our place in the world and our contributions because we we're in a space where people talk about big things I think generally on this show we really try and influence more the day-to-day -day, and that sometimes you know sometimes just getting out of bed is a victory sometimes completing a big project you're working on is a victory there's a lot of stuff out there in social media where basically if you're not earning 100k every single day then you're doing something wrong because we've all got the same hours in the day blah 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 but it just started getting me thinking about contributions so that whole road network that one person you can personify that by thousands tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people who've contributed to that and i'm only able to visit my kids because of all those people and their collective contributions and the car I'm driving in and how it's built and the innovations that sit in the car from, you know, from the combustion engine to the cool idea that my cup holders are slightly separated apart so you can get your drinks out of them sticking together. And different people have all contributed to all of that. And then we, we do it. We, you know, we, we all work in an industry. We, we outwardly don't talk about it, but you can find out if you really wanted to. 
But what we do enables people to do things they wouldn't be able to do without it. Or in our own ways, we're all, and it, the lot much like me with the road and just taking it for granted. I hope everyone takes what we do for granted within the work bit because they shouldn't have to worry about it. But all our contributions every day, big ideas, small ideas, daily processing and stuff, all contributes to that. And actually, that's everybody, everyone, everyone listening to this right now is part of that fabric and that framework. And they all doing things that will impact hundreds, thousands, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people, just like there are millions of people all doing things that impact them. And I just, I started to run away with this, I think. And I just, without being too sappy, the kind of beauty of all that all really hit me that we are all in this ecosystem together and we are all playing fantastic. And I say this in a positive way, tiny, fantastic parts in all of this. And I don't know, I just really like it as a concept and I found that really inspirational and it actually gave me more fire in the things that I do. Mm. There is, from the last bit before I get your guys' thoughts and everything I'm talking about, but there's, again, we think, you know, like we do, we aim big, we think big, we want to do big things, we want to contribute as much as we can, but there's bits where it hits me in life, which I think is a part of this, where actually the most special things are your one-on-one interactions with people and that how... How do you feel from it? How did they feel? I think I referenced this a few weeks ago because it's in my head. And obviously I've talked before about me and my want to leave people happy. But all those, they're the things, those little interactions, that is life. That's what importance, that's what matters. And back to my whole kind of mindfulness umbrella. I don't know, like I was in that moment then, it's just being in those moments and appreciating all those little things as much as the big things and realising how much of a difference you can make to people consciously or without even knowing it. So that's my that's my thought I've been building in my head. But back to that again, I just, I don't know, that, mm. and for no reason other than where this thought went, I think that little bit of a drive is always going to be quite special to me now because of this thought. I love that. I have a few things that. on this. That's my, oh, good, I like this. All right. Go. People that have listened to the podcast for a while will know that Lee and I are both quite avid Simpsons fans. Do you remember Simpsons episodes, Lee, where it would tell the story of two or three people going about their day? And how those days interact with each other. Do you... Bingo, dead. Is that the one? Yeah, kind of. I, I I can't remember the specific synopsis of the episode or episodes, but I know for a fact there are Simpsons episodes where they tell the stories over 10 minutes of the half yeah. an hour. There's one, it's... and I don't know if this is the one you're referencing, but it's something like 27 short stories about Springfield and yeah. there's loads of little stories. Yeah, but yeah, all, yeah, yeah, all, yeah, 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 yeah. it's got Lingo the robot in it and they yeah. all interact. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and that's that's the, something that pinged into my mind because it's all very butterfly effect E. Yeah. If you know what I mean. So something happens, so something could happen, so something could happen, so this happened, and it, and it exponentially grows each time. You referenced work and, you know, we don't talk about it uh, semi you know we, we semi talk about it but we don't but i do a lot of work with farmers and agricultural vehicles and things like that and without trying to sound like a martyr certain farmers don't have certain agricultural equipment because they've damaged them then it means that they can't harvest product which means they might not be able to sell product to supermarkets which may um as it exponentially grows supermarkets may I mean not be about... able to stock shelves and then they can't sell it's things and then there's completely. crises and then it just at that point it's in the universe and it's and it's an issue and i'm not saying that i solely fund and supply vehicles for all farmers and things like that because i don't but you're part of the chain though part of the chain part of it's a small cog in a big wheel and at every step that cog gets bigger and bigger and bigger until it's the, the thing that stops it from happening if that makes no sense. you're absolutely right and this is yeah. what i'm saying i just i think people underappreciate how much of everyone how much of an impact we have in this world not just us, but each individual step. Yeah, absolutely. If you're a receptionist at a business, it means that you're able to facilitate visitors and appointments and calls that help that business run, which then in yeah, turn oh, provides the in service that then in that turn value. it's everything. Even and bigger and, than that, a receptionist example. Sorry, I, I don't know. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right. Excited on this one, how they greet someone as they come in might affect that person's next meeting might affect yep. the whole rest of their day or yep. all, and not saying everyone has to be perfect and you know people are get stressed your extra your interactions aren't always perfect mm -hmm. but that impact you have on someone is always there yeah it's so strong and i just i just there was something it really 
yeah, it just made me feel really secure that not only yeah. am I really contributing to the world, but everybody is. Absolutely everybody. And I just, I don't know, it's a big insecurity buster for me. And I want it to be for everyone. So I've got a few things on this, like Ryan was sort of saying and following on from that. I just, um, a few things, because there was so much in that, both of you, by the way, that just, you know, things started triggering, triggering. So, you know, I know it's all about things that inspire us. And I love that because this almost takes me back to, it goes back to awareness, isn't it? Personal, like, awareness of what are things around you. Yeah. And evolving that because when I said about my mental health and I was doing, I was on the, you know, what I said about, I was on, I felt like I was on the treadmill. I was just going to work, coming home. Yes. You know, get, going to sleep, coming, coming, getting up, going to work. And the whole thing of that, when I, when I heard you talking was, I didn't appreciate that, but me doing my job as we do the jobs, I actually, I actually am helping people. I wasn't really seeing that. I wasn't applying what that purpose was to my life. I couldn't see the purpose, but there was a purpose. If I was, if I'd been more aware at that point in my life, and this is why I love, you know, the age that you guys are at, because I was not as aware, at, you know, especially at Ryan's age, as, as, as Ryan is right now, about the awareness of that, because that might have helped me get through my mental health quicker to realise that actually I do matter. What I am doing is making a difference somewhere, like like Ryan said, you know, getting people back on the right, whatever it might be, right? So that's the first thing. And this also reminded me of your your contribution around mindful eating and actually, when you said in that episode of the podcast, I, I edit all the podcasts, so I always rerun them. So I, I, I take lots of, and lots of it goes in where you are eating your food. And it's a bit like us in the industry we work, we get people fixed and whatever, where that food is, has been, has to been supplied to us in some way, shape, or form. Someone would have had to stock the shelves. Someone would have had to grow the food. Someone had to import yeah. it. Or if it's a local farm, they've had to have trucked it out. So again what this says to me is one of stephen Covey's big things that we're all interconnected in some way and it's really interesting because actually when we think about that in a big way the system is very fragile because yes, <laughs> everybody's got to do their job so if someone doesn't do their job down the line if ryan doesn't do the thing with the farmers if that guy hadn't done thing with his road right you may not got to scotland and ryan was saying ryan's maybe a fed, fed food, food food production right Whatever it is. So this is why I think it's really massive. It's a really, really good, good uh, thought to have because I think it's appreciated. That was when you were sitting in your car, you know, who's done the cup holders? Who's, who's actually made the engines? Who supplied the parts engine? Who's supplying the petrol? Who's getting the tires to you? You know, for you to get to A to B, who's clearing the roads? You get to words, you know, the people emptying the bins, you know, all these sort of things that we take for granted. And I think you said something, both of you said something before. We tend not to notice if things are working. We tend to notice when things aren't working. Yeah. So thinking about the strikes that are going right now, we've got in England, we've got rail strikes, we've got NHS strikes and all this. So you can start to see when infrastructure starts to break down, you can see how we're all interconnected. So I think it's a really big piece of work. That is why I think this is really inspiring, because I think in any jobs we do, in anything we do, we can find a purpose and meaning in the everyday. And going back to that whole thing about, put, you know, there was that, that was story, wasn't there, about when someone asked the person who was emptying the bins at NASA, I can't remember the actual thing, the thing behind it, said, um, what are you doing? Well, I'm, I'm helping someone get to the moon. He was emptying the bins to keep the place tidy to I get someone that. to the moon. I love that. And that is so powerful because that's what this means. This is what this all brings this back to. And it's so, so whatever job you're doing, whatever you're doing, whatever you're contributing, you ever try to chat with someone that can have an effect on someone that helps them do something. In fact, someone reached out to me and wanted some mentorship. So I'm doing mentorship. And again, I've got to be careful how I interact with that person, right? Because that's going to affect their production and how they go on about their lives. So we are all connected um, and everything that's around us right now, even this podcast, right? You've got your computers, we've got our lights, thinking about how they're supplied to us. You know, Amazon at the minute. Amazon at the minute, I mean, they've got a strike going on. You know, so, but if this stuff falls down, we start to know, oh, we start to recognize. And that's really the only time we sort of recognize, oh, this is happening. But we should be doing what you're saying, Lee and Ryan, recognizing now before the things break down, appreciate and actually appreciate what we bring and doing our best. Because if we do our best, that's going to help someone else along the line. I love that. That's really, really powerful. As, as a millennial, there's a phrase, something along the lines of, and it's just a phrase you use when somebody does something good for you. And it's like, they walked so I could run. And I don't think it's a millennial phrase, but it's quite popular in, in like memes and stuff I see around my age. Genuinely, everyone on this planet walks. So everyone else on this planet can run. We all yeah. do something so somebody else can do what they need to do. And some other people will do stuff for us 
so we can go and do what we need to do and it's and it's we're, we're all we're all doing things so other people benefit as a result of it and, i agree uh, with that i agree with that and and again you know like if you think of the big players like elon musk they need a whole team of people they need supplies or whatever if that falls down they can't do they can't do the running right they can't go to space whatever um so i absolutely agree with what you're saying there um 100 so again it's i really like that saying but i think you know we've got to think we're all together and and um what i was thinking as well is that you know today i, I today you know today i was thinking about something how small we are on this planet floating around in space and we are literally a speck in the universe and I think there was a something about William Shatner went up to space and he and he saw the Earth for for the first this, time from space. This was a TV show, Star Trek. It's not. It's not real. <laughs> he did actually go to space. No, no, it's no Jerome. It's not. It, it was on the set in the studio. Yes, Lee. <laughs> so, as Lee said, Star Trek. There was a series. I love the Star Trek series, by the way. And I, I may have got really confused. However, when he went up with Jeff Bezos, I went up on. I can't remember the spaceship now. What was it? It was Blue Origin. The USS that... Enterprise. <laughs> but he was really adamant about us being really serious about caring about the planet because literally we are like a spaceship in space floating around and we all got our jobs to do. So this goes back to what you're saying, Lee. So going from that road, going from the things we talk about to actually how we are surviving as a species, that all we're all interconnected and we need to be doing more of this. And what we want this podcast to do is to help with that contribution the every day Absolutely. and this is why i love this subject lisa thank you for that and i love that and yes it was star trek a 1970s uh series which i absolutely loved and watched a lot was it 60s did not go oh, but i watched it in the 70s though okay captain's oh. lock start date 48321 it was great jeff bezos is accompanying me on the starship starship enterprise to set up the first intergalactic amazon delivery setup oh, we're also in insignificant Yep. Um, and Jeff Bezos, by the way, no longer works for Amazon, just to let you know. The fact that I have no idea what you're on about means that 99% of the audience... I Don't get me wrong, I understand that Star Trek was a thing. I understand the concept, but that's it. Oh, and they do the weird finger thing that I can't do. I, I can't do the it. Spock. I can't. There you go. I, I can do Live it. Live long and prosper. Yeah. I was born of a different time. Can you do that, TikTok? Can you do that, TikTok? Can you do that, TikTok? Go on. Off you go. Have a go. It's like, it's like he's scissoring his fingers. That's the spot. Yeah. Oh, Not me. A bit. Yeah, I love this, by the way. No, it's really, really good. Really powerful. Um, yeah, and, and the awareness. And, and I think I think this really would help, like I said before, about if I, if I could have been more aware and recognised actually the contribution I was making, um, that would have been powerful, very powerful back then. But but I had to go through it to get to where I am right now. Oh, and, and again, that's probably almost like we've gone through this. And we're all together now because of all the things that have gone on, right? We've got we've got together as a, as a team, right? Absolutely. Doing all this, they're doing all this together, and uh, we're making our big contribution through the videos and shorts and through the you know helping people. In fact, actually, just to let you know, I had an email from someone really saying thank you for a video uh, on our channel uh, this week. Love I forgot that. to tell you guys, we and um, and and they wanted a bit of help, so I just emailed them back with a bit of help. Um, so please sign up to the newsletter. Um, and you can email me directly and Absolutely. you will get a reply. So that was wonderful, actually. It was so nice um, and, it, and it really helped them um, get an interview for um, a job at, is it Land Rover Jaguar, right? So it helped them get a Jaguar job Land there. Jaguar Land Rover. Jaguar, sorry, Jaguar. I always get that wrong. Did you actually help them get a job there? I didn't help them. They helped themselves. No, sorry, you know, but that's given that that is a video, I love that. There is a video Joe's got, gets on the YouTube channel. Just look for our most popular videos. It'll come straight out. I love that, Joe. That's, yeah. You actually helped them, yeah. And they, they emailed me. That. That's why. I love yeah. that. Um, Keith on TikTok has said, I think we've expanded so much, we now realize we need community. I totally Very agree with that. Yeah, absolutely. Think. absolutely. Keith, thank you for that. Yeah, thank you for that. And uh, yeah, thank you. Welcome to the podcast. Absolutely massive contribution. That. I love that. I've got another little bit. So this is a completely separate thing, but I think it links together because part of this thing I like is all this whole thing in my head and things when I'm driving, it is the whole, it ties with your walking and running thing actually, Ryan, because there's just so much that exists. That, again, we kind of take for granted, but it's all built upon things and built upon things and built upon things. But the the message in here, I suppose, is, is back to that asking why thing, but not always in a challenging way, but as an understanding thing. And it can be a challenging thing, but I read something, this was on LinkedIn. Now it's one of those things that probably isn't 100% accurate and loads of people called it out. 
but I really loved the message from it. And I like to believe that some of it might be true. So you might have seen this already. And I say, I'm totally stealing it from LinkedIn. It's done the rounds there. But I, again, it just inspired me and it kind of linked into this thought for me a little bit around, you know, everything, how it's built and stuff. But it started off with, did you know that the train tracks in America are whatever the spacing is between them? I don't can't remember the number. There might have been a four in it. And it said, but did you know the reason for that is that when people came over from United Kingdom to America, they just built them to the same standard that they built they built them for before, because that's that's what they did. So that's why they were what they were. So then you can go back a step. But why are they what they are? Because it's a really odd sizing. And the reason they are what they are is that when they were building the carriages to go on the trains, they used the same technology that they built carriages to go on the road. And that's the spacing they already built them for. So they built the railroad to match the spacing so they didn't have to build a whole new load of kit to build the carts or carriages to go on the train track. And the reason they built the carriages the way they were is because that is when the car on the roads, there were tracks like indents where the carriage wheels went. And if you built the carriages to be too small or too wide, the wheels would buckle. So they built them to match the linings that were on the road. So that's why carriages were built and that became like a standard size. The reason the, car the indents were in the road, the reason they were like they were, is because a lot of the major roads in England were built on top of the Roman roads that were built in Roman times. And the Roman roads had these indents in them from their carriages that went up and down the road. So they wore in over time and it had just been built on top of it. See, Joe, I've got you. This is good, isn't it? Mm. Is this where Camber and comes from? What's Camber? Camber in, in the roads? Oh. Are they slant off? Well, I know. I think that was one of their things was for their road because it, right. it, it ran the rain off. But this was more the, the track marks that were in it and the road, right. new road got built on top of the old yeah. road and yeah, still yeah, had yeah. the indents. I've cut, you, I've cut you off, sorry. Yeah. No, 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 no. This is it's good. I like that you're engaged with my rumba rambles. And the reason the Roman carriages were the size they were is because it's effectively a carriage was made so that it can have two horses in front of it. Mm -hmm. So that's what defined the size that defined the indents in the road that defined what the roads were that defined the carriages that defined railway carriages that defined railway space in the uk that defined railway space in america so to bring it back to now a recent space shuttle they were designing the propulsion like things on that sit on the bottom of it that all the fire and smoke or whatever comes out of you can tell i'm an engineer with the way i talk about this stuff and they wanted to build them a certain size the problem was that transporting them from where they were built to somewhere in florida when it's going to take off from they had to go through several tunnels that were cut in the size of the mountain from the trains which are the size they are because of blah, 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 blah. so they had to redesign these things so that they could fit through the train which they made work but it took a whole load of work to re-engineer it and they made it work so they could transport it in the kit fit with the tunnels the moral of the story is that on a rocket ship a modern one height of engineering, height of technology, height of everything else, part of its design was based on the size of two horses' arses from the Roman times. Brilliant. That's so good. And I, just, I just loved that. I found it. And again, it may not all be 100% true, but I really want it to be. because I really, And it's just that one is asking what, because there's, there's a reason for everything. And I just think it's fascinating to find out what it was. And again, it's all yeah. standing on the shoulders of giants where everything it's, it's innovation. Everything is just a slight tweak on what was there and built yeah. upon and built upon and built upon. And I just, I really enjoyed that. It was a yeah, great it's the, it's the power of iteration. You stole my actual yeah. words. I actually was thinking of what you said, because we all do stand on the shoulders of giants. Like, so that story is so inspiring. In that web yeah. and how we all interact with each other and how we bounce off each other. And I just... Yeah. Yeah, it's it's amazing, and all and all the stuff we talk about in personal development, the things we talk about in this podcast, and sort of going back to what you're saying, goes back thousands of years to philosophers and the Stoicism stuff and all that. And this is why I think it's so powerful because it's 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 there. It's just we're building on it. Everyone's building it in different ways. Like you say, innovation. Love it. No, it's so good. I love that story. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. There so you go. Oh. There are a couple of things I've had rattling. Oh, sorry. Go on, Ryan. I was going right. to say uh, the only thing because I know we're going to have to wrap up now, but the mm. only thing. Um, that cracks me up about things like this is that we still use the power of those two horses to value the speed of cars oh, and automobiles. Yeah. Yeah. Hell, like, from I, that, yeah. that boggles my mind. Nobody, nobody alive uh, was alive when 
horse and carts. Actually, that's probably not true. Most people alive were well, not go. alive when when Remember horse and carts telegrams. were the were the most common form of transport, and we're still using the value of the power of one horse multiplied by depending <laughs> yes. how good your car is, ninety nine <laughs> yeah. or five hundred and ninety nine. To, to to judge how strong and powerful your car is, it's, it's I, I, it boggles my mind. It's amazing, isn't it? There's a guy, isn't it, that, that actually did that thing, and I don't know the name of the guy, but there's, there's a guy who did that calculator. And it's still like even the power of electric cars, they're measured in horsepower. Oh, I was going to say, so I've got an electric car, and the name of the car has one three six in it for its horsepower. So this is the latest, <laughs> most up to date innovation of a propulsion engine, and it's still based on a horse. And that goes back like the space shuttle thing you talk about, didn't it? About that story. It's still, you know, it's it's through time. It's time, almost like time less, isn't it? Fabulous. Love I love that. that. Love all that stuff. So again, these again, this is these are things that have inspired me, and I hope sharing them gives some inspiration to other people as well. Yeah, so what the name of the show, right? What inspires us, and this is what this is about. What inspires you? Go do it. Go find those inspiring things. Surround yourself with it. Get to your next level. I love it. Absolutely. Everyone out there, we massively thank you for the support. If you're watching on YouTube, again, we're getting very popular over there. Jose Noy, Inspiration Nation, you can join in there. The full podcasts, little two-minute snippets coming out all the time, and Joe's YouTube shorts are on there as well. So just head over um, for that. Follow us on Twitter at listen to N, listen to OIN, and Joe is everywhere on social media, Jose Noy, Inspiration Nation. There are link trees all over the place of all our links. Get involved. Follow us on inspirationnation.org.uk as well for merch. Me and Joe in our matching hoodies today, mugs. I've got mine somewhere, but I can't find it. Loads of great stuff over there. We thank you for the support. Most importantly, if you like what you're doing, Ryan's in as well. Look at that merch yeah. on all three screens. If you like what we're doing, if it's on YouTube, if it's on a podcast player, if you're just watching a couple of minutes snippet somewhere, subscribe, like, leave a review, follow. All of that is what helps us grow tremendously. Thanks, Joe, for the face mask as well. Um, and do not forget, we will get trending hashtag Jose Noya only fans. This is where we are going. <laughs> no, next. not the only fans. This is the next. He thought we forgot. He thought we forgot. The podcast. Oh, God. <laughs> It's going to be a thing now, right now, isn't it? It's going to be a thing. I can just see it now. Oh, well, no. if we get it right on only fans, there will be a thing and they will be making that money. <laughs> and on that note, there really is nothing left for me to do but count us down. Three, two, one. Inspiration Nation. Inspiration Nation. Catch you guys later. Catch you guys, you guys later. later. Let me know what your biggest takeaway is from this conversation. I'd love to know. Put it in the comments below and I'll respond to every single comment because that's the commitment I make to you in this community. Also, don't forget to subscribe right over here because we need you to build this Inspiration Nation community to get the podcast out there and to help other people for free. And also, don't forget to hit that bell right over here because if you hit that bell, then you're going to know when another video is going live. And don't forget to check out these videos right here next to me because those are other podcast episodes that can really help you out. I really, really appreciate it. And lastly, don't forget out to check the newsletter. The link is in the description below. That's where I can talk directly to you without through the YouTube, throughout the social, because you can have a direct communication channel with me through the email and you can get to know everything that's going on with Inspiration Nation, ask me questions and even give me suggestions of what you want us to talk about next. So I'd love to see you in the next video. So please click on those links. Please follow through. Please let's get this community building. I appreciate you. So until next time, I'll see you in the next video, Inspiration Nation, and I'll catch you guys later.